Is the Roman Catholic system guilty of promoting child pornography? I believe the answer to that question is a definite yes. And I believe that they've been doing it for centuries. And I'm not even going to get into the actual child pornography. I'm going to show you a soft core child pornography. And I call it child pornography because it has no basis in scripture. Okay. Um, and I have here the Cornell University Law School's Legal Information Institute, their definition, 18 U.S. Code uh, number 2256 definitions for what constitutes child pornography. I'm going to read some of these definitions here. It says here, for the purposes of this chapter, the term minor means any person under the age of 18 years. And you're going to see in Catholic art that there are definitely nude uh, minors children under the age of 18. And it goes down through a bunch of things. I'm not going to put this stuff up because it's getting into some pretty graphic language here. But number three, it says producing means producing, directing, manufacturing, issuing, publishing, or advertising. And certainly Roman Catholicism has added to this thing of child pornography. And I'm going to show you that here as we continue. Uh, number eight, Child pornography means any visual depiction, including any photograph, film, video, picture, or computer, or computer-generated image or picture, whether made or produced by electronic, mechanical, or other means of sexually explicit conduct, where the production of such visual, visual depiction involves the use of, my, of a minor engaging in sexually explicit conduct. Now, I'm going to show you some of that here in just a minute. And I'm going to put a little bit of modesty, little blacked out areas on the pictures just because you don't need to be vexed. But if you jump down to number 11, now here's where they, they will squeak through. The Roman Catholic artists down through the centuries, they'll squeak through with this definition. Definition number 11 says here, this definition does not apply to depictions that are drawings, cartoons, sculptures, or paintings depicting minors or adults. So the uh, Cornell Law School there, the Law Institute, uh, gives an exemption to the Roman Catholic perverts that have been down through the centuries. And you got to watch out for this thing of art, too, okay? I was in the art field for a few years, and I know a lot of this stuff, you know, they, they just push the envelope of what is acceptable, and they call it art. Okay, um, you're painting nude things and stuff all the time. You're a pervert, okay? Don't tell me, oh, it's because I respect the human body, and mm -hmm, sure you do. I was around that stuff. I know what, you know, how that thing works. But uh, let me show you some things here. Now, remember it said about computer-generated images and things like this. Well, if you go to Restored Traditions, here's a painting which I saw, and I thought, this is rather telling. Okay, you have St. Anthony of Padua and Christ Child, painted by Chambers. All right. Now, take a look at that picture. Now, tell me, is that thing biblically accurate? No. First of all, the uh, quote-unquote Christ child has blonde hair. And when was the Christ child ever picked up by a Roman Catholic monk or priest, whatever this guy, this pervert was here, whatever this guy was, when was Jesus Christ as a baby ever picked up by a priest and kissed on the cheek and see how there's makeup and stuff on the child's face and it's meant to look attractive and kind of like that now you know to a normal person they look at that and they just go oh, it's you know a priest holding a, a child or whatever but what if you're a pedophile priest one of these perverts that are into the uh, just thousands upon thousands of these pervert priests and you had benedict you know pope benedict there the last devil that was in covering up for the whole pedophile priest scandal and they're dealing out hundreds of millions of dollars you know to cover up their sins of raping small children and of course some catholic out there is going to say when the protestants do it too yes i'm well aware of that that's why i'm not a protestant i'm not a catholic and i'm not a protestant okay i'm a bible believing christian we existed centuries before the roman catholics ever even came to be known right donatists Paulicians, you know, the Waldensians, the Vaudois, the Albigensians, the Huguenots later on, all those early Christian groups, the Catholics always just called us heretics, you know. I'm still considered as a heretic. Big surprise. But you see there, you know, look at, I mean, 
tell me, what is that painting all about? And of course, you know, there I'm not going to get into the phallic significance of the tonsure haircut there of that monk. But, you know, this St. Anthony of Padua, by the way, is the patron saint of lost items. Just in case you lose your keys, you can pray to this lunatic devil right here, and he'll help you find your keys. I'm not joking, by the way. He is the patron saint of lost items. Uh, he looks more to me like the patron saint of uh, pedophiles, pedophile priests. Let me show you another painting. Here again you see the naked baby and, and Mary is presenting him to the pervert priest. Isn't that so nice? Yeah, that's just so wonderful. You know. And there you have this pervert priest again, you know, and he's holding these white lilies symbolizing purity. Oh, isn't that wonderful? What are you doing with a little naked baby that's not your child? You know? Another one. Again, I mean, look at the, the, the lusty, you know, look in, the, in this child's eyes is looking into the priest's eyes and, uh, you know, don't tell me some pervert priest isn't going to look at that and, and get a thrill from that. You know, you say, why are you even bringing it up? Well, because there's a major problem in that papal system of these dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking priests raping small children. There's a reason why. Their art depicts it. Here's another one, stained glass window. Again, look at lovingly looking into each other's eyes and kissing each other. Where is this at in the Bible? Where is there a priest with a tonsured haircut holding Jesus Christ as a little baby and kissing and snuggling with him and stuff like that? Where is this at? One more, just in case you weren't vexed enough. Again, you know... What is that? But now we'll go to uh, the actual thing of another part of the whole scenario here, and that is their depiction of cherubim. And you can see here in this painting, here you have all the shepherds and stuff down here below, and real fancy, you know, stable that they're in there. But up above you have these naked babies with wings. I mean, that's in Scripture, isn't it? I mean, certainly there's naked babies with wings, you know, flying around in full nudity and stuff like that. I mean, where's this stuff at? And you say, well, those, those are cherub. They're, they're cherubs. You know, that's, that's what that is. That's a cherub. Let's, let's actually see what the Bible, how the Bible describes a cherub. Ezekiel chapter 1 uh, verse 4, we'll start there. It says, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire unfolding, enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the collar of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, not a little baby. And every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the collar of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they, had, they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. Now look at this, verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man... And the face of a lion on the right side. So they all had the face of a man, but then the face of a lion over here. Okay? On the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. And they four also had the face of an eagle. Is that what a cherub looks like? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. And uh, it says here, uh, thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. Okay, and it keeps going on there. We're not going to read the whole thing. But you see this thing, this description of the appearance of cherubim. Right? And even back in the Old Testament, let me, let me look up the reference here real quick. Um, I think it's in, you know, well, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 11 says, and he rode upon a cherub and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. So, 
how do you ride upon a small baby with these little dinky little wings? Okay, I mean, why is this stuff being depicted by the Roman Catholics? Kind of strange. I mean, if they're the ultimate expositors of Scripture, shouldn't they say, hey, whoa, wait a second here. This isn't, a, this isn't accurate to the Bible. Here's another one. And, you know, see, I, I believe, you know, these little babies up here and they're, you know, half of them, they got their naked rears and stuff like this. And you got other ones that they're laying there and their legs are spread apart. I mean, is this really something that should be depicted? And, of course, you have this famous one here, the two cherubs, you know, and they're mm, like this and the other one, mm, you know. Chapter and verse, please. And again, naked cherubim, they're, they're going to put a, a crown on Mary's head. Isn't that nice of them? You know, and you get these weird, sexless, winged things. They look like women, but, you know, they have a lot of times their arms and their legs are like men. This, see, the whole system of Roman Catholicism is messed up and it's always been messed up. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get through to people. It isn't that, oh, now that they're praying to Lucifer, now they're messed up, but the pre-Vatican II Vatican, oh boy, they were good. No, they've always been bad. They've always been messed up. The system has always been against the Bible and true Bible-believing Christians. Always has been. Always will be until the Lord destroys Roman Catholicism in Revelation chapter 8, or 18, excuse me, which is in the future. Uh, the Catholics try to spiritualize that and put that in the past. And again, you see some more cherubim here, you know, naked in their, their, you know, I mean, just very inappropriate. So I think that's all the pictures I have right now. Yeah, but, you know, again, where's this stuff at in Scripture? See, it just... Every single part, every facet of Roman Catholicism, when you study it, it's just so anti-scriptural. I mean, it's an unscriptural too. I mean, it's just like, where's this stuff coming from? You know? And you see this organization that's raping and molesting children into the thousands, probably millions by now, I'm sure. And just raping children, raping children, raping children. And there's stories about Benedict, you know, getting into human sacrifice and all kinds of stuff. I have no idea. It wouldn't shock me a bit, to be very frank. But the fact of the matter is, it's an epidemic among Catholicism. And I believe part of the reason is because they've been depicting naked children in their paintings for centuries. And no biblical support for it. I'd get out of that system if I was you. If you're watching this thing and you're a Roman Catholic, I'd run away from that system quickly. Okay? There is no biblical support for the Mass. I covered that. I showed it from the Dewey Reams translation. Okay? Eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Almighty God is very disgusting and it's cannibalism. It's forbidden in Scripture to drink blood. Okay? When Jesus Christ talked about it, it was merely symbolic. Obviously, because he had his literal blood there, nobody came up and drank of it. So, it could not have been literal. It was symbolic. Anybody who's honest is going to come away with that conclusion. Okay? Mary, in the Bible, was a sinner who needed a Savior. She had multiple children. Okay? Jesus was merely the firstborn. And Joseph didn't know her until after she brought forth her firstborn child. So, again, everything about Catholicism is corrupt and crooked. Everything. You better get away from that system.